Yo, Elliot, how do you maintain such a grounded frame when you talk? I feel like I get excited once I start expressing my opinion, but I get lost in the passion and end up being ungrounded and coming off overexcited and anxious to explain my point. I'm not very social or charismatic. I think I may even come off like I don't like people, even though that's not, that's not true. I'm just awkward and standoffish. I've never been trusting of people. I grew up in a hood and moved to a very nice area in high school and have been there ever since. At first, I literally thought people were being sarcastic because they were so friendly. I'm a grown man now, 30 years old, and in the same nice area, but I still seem paranoid, standoffish kind of person. So there's a few things going on here. You're asking me how to, how to maintain a grounded frame when you talk. I got to be completely honest, man. I don't, I don't always maintain a grounded frame when I talk, and you can almost see when the, flip, when the switch flips. Because I just start, I start dropping F-bombs. I start talking faster. I start like, I get like physically animated. And when I was a kid, I thought that was a bad thing too, right? Because the teachers in school, they gave me a hyperactivity medication as a result. And um, I would have a hard time making friends sometimes because I talk loud. I talk animated. And sometimes it sounds like I'm yelling at people. I like to give my opinion. Um... It doesn't make for easy relationships with soft people. My parent, my parents are from Belize, and I don't know if it's because they're from Belize or what, but my dad is, is, is a hardcore animated speaker. Him and all his un- all my uncles, all his brothers. When I was a kid, I remember they would come over, right? He had like nine brothers. They would come over to my house, and they would be sitting around the table, and they would be shouting, and they'd be slamming the table. They'd be yelling and pointing at each other, and rah, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Like talking like that, big, wide open eyes and mouth. But it didn't mean anything. It just meant that they like to talk loud. They like to anim- they're animated people. They like to have wild conversations. They like to give their opinions. And when I was young, I used to think that they were fighting, right? Until I grew up and I realized I'm just like these guys. And I, I had some friends, man. It was, a little, it was tough. It was tough because I was maybe in like sixth or seventh grade. And these kids that I always grew up with, right, they were in the same block as me. All of a sudden, they turned on me. They turned on me, and I didn't know why. I'm like, why the fuck are these kids turning on me? Like, it was sad. I cried. I was upset. I was like, none of my friends want to hang out with me anymore. I don't know why. And apparently, they had ganged up, and they decided that Elliot is just too much. He talks too loud. He he, he, he expresses his opinion too fiercely, uh, and they just didn't want to deal with me. And so... You're asking me about maintaining a grounded frame. I don't know if that's necessarily was needed. What the change for me was this, and I gotta explain to you. Like I've been struggling with this my entire life. It's not something that like kind of went away. Even as I made videos, there are times where I'm like I second guess myself because I'm like, wow, maybe I was just a little bit too off the hook. Maybe I was just a little too off the chain that time, right? And sometimes I gotta hold myself back. But I also know it's a gift because. It's easy to shut me off if you're watching a video. Like people, a lot of people don't even like to watch me. They're like, I can't stand this guy, right? But to make friends face to face is tough because they gotta see you, and I gotta see them. But if I make videos, hey, you don't have to fucking see me. You can turn me off if you don't want. And it's easier to give people your opinion and to and to talk in that aggressive way when you're not face to face. Yo, it's a fucking screen, right? Like I'm not gonna get you. I'm not, you don't get my spit in your face when I'm talking, <laughs> right? It's just, it's just a fucking camera, right? So at the same time, it's a gift, right? It's a gift. And, and the more ungrounded I get, sometimes the more charismatic I get, right? Being ungrounded in a way is charisma, right? You ever watch like, who am I thinking of? Like, you know, there's some comedians that like, when they start get rolling, they're just rolling, right? Or even rappers, you ever see some rappers that are freestyling? And all of a sudden, it's almost like somebody flipped that switch, and it's like they're in a flow and they're just like the whole body's moving and they're spitting and they're rah, 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 right? It's a pretty cool thing. It's a pretty cool thing. At least, you know, if you're talking about what I'm talking about and you say, you know, maintaining a grounded frame when you talk and you're getting excited and expressing your opinions and you get lost up in passion, that's actually pretty entertaining for people to see sometimes. That's why I do it. 
That's why I do it. That's why I make these videos. Because I know people are entertained when they see me go off the rails. Right? I made videos of me just going off the rails. Because people love to see it. <laughs> and I'm partly an entertainer. Right? Like, I am an entertainer. I'm just giving you... Look, somebody else could be answering these same questions. And they might give you better answers. I don't know. But nobody going to say it like the way I say it. Because I'm entertaining y'all. Right? I'm entertaining you. And so... Don't let that be a bad thing. Don't let that be something that like you beat yourself up about. Even though some people don't get it, they can't get it. They don't understand it. That's okay. You could just inter you could just enjoy me from afar, right? You say uh, I think I may come off like I don't like people, even though that's not true. Now what you're doing is you're trying to get it. Here's the circle jerk of your thinking. You're thinking in circles. I'm judging myself, right? And not only am I judging myself, I'm judging myself based on what I'm judging other people to be judging me as. Think about how retarded that is. I'm judging myself based on how I'm judging them to be judging me. <laughs> if, you can, if, there's, if there's a definition of circle jerk, circle your thinking, hyper self-focused narcissism, that's it right there. And we all do it. <coughs> I'm thinking about how you thinking about thinking about me. You think it too damn much. Just get over it, right? Just get over it. Don't even don't even stress it. He says I'm awkward and standoffish and never trusting people. Well, that might be about the whole. You know, that's that's a byproduct of all the judgment going on. You don't trust yourself, so you're not trusting them that they trust in you, right? You grew up in the hood. You moved away, but that was a long time ago. That was half your life ago, right? You moved to a nice area. You around nice people. And they're being nice to you, right? Just, just, just accept it that they're being nice to you. And if they don't want to be around you, that's okay too. But this is one of those situations where you're just being overly critical of yourself. You really just gotta let yourself be. And I gotta tell you this as well: what you have, if 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 I understand you correctly, uh, is also something that people wish they had. They wish they could do. I know people wish they could talk like me. That's what you're asking. You say, how do you maintain such a grounded frame when you talk? You only see me because a part of me lives in you. You could do what I do. I assume that you can, right? Because if you're charismatic, you're expressing your opinions, you're getting all passionate and ungrounded and excited when you're talking, that means you have what it takes to be an excited, entertaining speaker, right? So maybe you could use that to your advantage. Like I said, once again, it's not, it's a double-edged sword because when I'm in the presence of people, they don't want to hear me. And Chance says, apparently people don't like to be talked over too. Yeah, I talk over people, right? <laughs> I'm not, I may be, I'm, I'm not sure I'm a great conversationalist. Let me put it that way. I'm not sure I'm great to talk around. In fact, if you meet me, there's a good chance I'm going to be very quiet because that's how I've learned how to manage myself as, a, as an adult. I don't say very much unless people ask me. Now, if you ask me my opinion, you're going to get it. But for the most part, I keep my mouth shut. I'm usually very quiet when I'm around people. And when you say, uh, you know, you get excited when you're expressing your opinion, that must mean that they're asking your opinion. And if you do like I do and you don't give your opinion unless people ask, just let them know, hey, you're about to open up a can of worms. And I, it's funny because I got to meet my neighbors a couple weeks ago and I knew that was going to happen because, you know, I haven't been around people very much and I'm, I'm kind of a recluse in a way. And, you know, I want, of course, I want them to, I want them to see me in a good light, right? I don't want them to be like, oh, my neighbor's an asshole. So, you know, the conversation is going nicely. I'm asking questions. I'm being a good guy. I'm being a nice guy. But when the topic started getting political, right? When the topic started getting like, you know, when we talk about some like heavy, heavily divisive things, I didn't ask them. They asked me my opinion. And I, w I wasn't trying to feel them out. I was just giving them my opinion. I was just like, oh. And I said that too. I said, oh, we're about to open up a can of worms, but here I go. And they loved it. They thought it was great. They thought it was awesome. And they enjoyed hearing what I had to say. But at the same time, it could have gone bad. It could have gone south. So, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, just, just accept yourself, man. Accept yourself as you are. Present yourself as you are. Don't think about yourself too much, right? And just allow yourself to be, 
right? If people can't handle you, that's their problem. That's another one from my father, man. Because my, like I said, I got this from my father. This is what my father is, right? My, and the thing is, my father's also a master at what he does. And I'm just going to throw this out there too because, you know, there's, there's a bit of an arrogance to what I'm saying. And it has to be founded in, it has to be justified in a way. So if you're going to be this, you're going to be this uh, self-accepting of yourself and just allow yourself to be, you also have to demonstrate some form of mastery, right? You get, my dad is the way he is because he's great at what he does. So nobody can say nothing to him, right? It's like, what, you, what are you going to do? I'm the best. I'm the king, right? And so it's the same thing for you. As a man, we are judged by our abilities. That's really what it is. Men are mostly judged by our abilities. And when I say judged, I'm talking about how men judge other men. Men don't judge other men by the standards which women judge us. It's, it's similar, but it's different. Because a man will respect a man based on what he can do, what he can contribute. Women judge a man by what she can get from him because of what he can do and what he can tr contribute. But a man will just look at another man and be like, no doubt that guy is skilled. No doubt that guy is smart. No doubt that guy is charismatic. No doubt that guy is, you know, he's, he, he's got what it takes. And we respect that. So you also have to, and this is just, this is for all men. I'm not just talking to you. Demonstrate some form of mastery in your life. And then, and, and basically then, it's, you're, uh, you're justified. <clears throat> he says, I work, I'm most comfortable being me at work. I'm a butcher and I work for a lot of men. That makes sense. Yeah. So that's, that's good, man. So you know, you know that you're appreciated. Let me put it that way. You know you're appreciated when, you work, when you're around those men. When you're around other people, effeminate men and women, don't even worry about it. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. All right, so that's it. I hope that helps, dude. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.